distal pharynx fractures. Injuries of the distal pharynx can be a fingertip injury, which will be a different topic by itself. Fracture of the distal pharynx is the most common phalangeal fracture, and it can occur from a crushing injury that produce major soft tissue injury. It can involve the tuft, the shaft, or the base of the pharynx. If it involves the tuft, it's usually a crush injury and may be associated with a nail bit injury. And usually it is associated with subangular hematoma. And if the hematoma involved more than 25% of the nail, especially if there is a fracture, then you need to remove the nail, explore and suture the nail bed. Most of the time, the fracture is comminuted. Probably we need a splint. In some cases, it may need KOR fixation. The fracture may fail to unite. Fracture shaft, usually the fractures are stable and can be treated conservatively by splint or body taping. Surgery is rarely needed. The distal pharynx non-union, if symptomatic and painful, you will do reduction in tendon fixation and bone graft. Fracture base of the distal pharynx, there are two types. In one type, the patient is unable to flex the DIP joint, and this is a patient that have a jersey finger or volar base fracture. Or the patient may have a dorsal base fracture and will have a mallet finger, and the patient will not be able to extend the DIP joint. If the fracture is large, there may be a volar subluxation of the distal pharynx. Be aware of avulsion fracture at the base of the distal pharynx. It must be evaluated thoroughly. It could be an avulsion of the insertion of the flexor or the extensor tendon, and the fracture may appear small and benign. Mallet finger, the dorsal base fracture, what is the indication of surgery? If the fragment is large or if there is a volar subluxation of the joint, that can be treated by different techniques. K-wire utilization is a very common technique. The goal is to keep the DIP extended until the bone heals. Some orthopedic surgeons will continue to treat this injury by closed beans, by split, even if there is a volar subluxation of the joint. And the rationale is a stiff finger that's treated closed is better than a stiff finger that is treated by surgery. Avulsion of the insertion of the flexor digitorum profundus. When the tendon is avulsed with a bony fragment, the tendon with a piece of bone could be retracted at different levels and it can be seen in the x-ray. It also can retract more proximally. In general, if the tendon is retracted to the palm, then the blood supply could be affected and surgery should be done within 10 days. If the fragment is large, usually the retraction is limited to the DIP. On examination, the finger lies in extension relative to other fingers, and the patient would not be able to do active DIP flexion. Seymour fracture is an epiphyseal fracture of the distal pharynx. It is a flexion injury that leads to physeal separation between the extensor tendon dorsally and the flexor digitorum profundus volarly.
It causes an avulsion of the nail from the nail fold with disruption of the nail matrix. The patient finger will appear flexed, looks like a mallet finger, and the nail appears to be larger compared to the nail on the other side. It is really an open fracture and need to be treated by antibiotics, a removal of the nail, irrigation and debridement of the fracture, reduction and pinning of the fracture, and nail bed repair. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.